Barnes & Noble unveils the Nook e-reader, Apple releases a new line of iMacs, and we're going to show you some earbuds that will help you look like a crazy person. It's Wednesday, October 21st. I'm Natalie Del Conte, and it's time to get loaded. On Tuesday, we reported a new e-reader by Barnes & Noble. Yesterday, the company showed it off here in New York. Take a look. This is Barnes & Noble's first big ebook reader, um, and it does something that the Kindle can't do. It has a color screen on it. It has both a six-inch e-ink screen as well as a capacitive touch screen on the bottom. And this is an Android-powered device. Uh, right now, really, that color touch screen is only going to be used for navigating the device, and this is a wireless device. It has both 3G and Wi-Fi. Uh, the Wi-Fi only will work right now in Barnes & Noble stores. Barnes & Noble will be offering some special downloads to the device if you go into the store with it. Another key new feature here is a lending feature. You can actually lend out ebooks to your friends. You can send a book to an iPhone, a Blackberry, or another Nook, of course, um, and lend that book out for free for 14 days. If you compare this to the Kindle, the battery life isn't quite as good. You get about 14 days with the Kindle, whereas you get about 10 days with this device. That's still pretty good. You can listen to MP3 audio. And you can also load PDFs onto this device, so it is pretty versatile. The Nook will be available in late November in time for the holiday season, and it is priced at $259. That matches the price of the Kindle. Apple unveiled a new line of iMacs on Tuesday, and they have something interesting called a multi-touch mouse. It uses the same multi-touch gestures that you use on the multi-touch trackpads on the MacBooks. The new iMacs will move from aluminum and polycarbon to an aluminum and edge-to-edge -edge glass design. There's a 21 and a 27-inch version. The new MacBook is also polycarbon and has the multi-touch trackpad. And the Mac Mini got an update in hard drive, CPU, and memory, but the price remains the same. We, of course, have full reviews of all these machines for you right here on CNET. Sidekick users are starting to get their data back, although it is coming in piecemeal. Microsoft released a statement on Tuesday saying that there is a new tool on T-Mobile's website that lets Sidekick owners restore their address books. I assume the calendars, photos, and other data will come back little by little. Microsoft says that this process will take a few weeks. YouTube has a new feature that lets you search for what people are talking about within videos. This is called Comment Search, and the searches will be compiled in real time in a new Trending Topics section. This is basically a compendium of what people are discussing at any given moment. Trending Topics is, not coincidentally, what Twitter calls the same thing. TechCrunch is reporting that Google is about to launch a music service called Google Audio. This is just a rumor, but supposedly the company has been working with the major music labels to secure content licenses. We don't know if this will be a free service or if it will be a downloading service. Google already has a music service in China. The new Insignia line of Blu-ray players can stream Netflix movies. We've of course seen Blu-ray players that could do this before, but they were high-end versions. The Insignia Advanced Series Blu-ray player costs $249 and the Insignia Connected Blu-ray player costs $179. Both are internet ready, but the Insignia Advanced has built-in Wi-Fi, whereas the Insignia Connected needs Ethernet. Insignia, in case you didn't know, is Best Buy's brand of electronics. You don't have to be Tom Cruise to have an ultrasound machine at home. GE CEO Jeff Immelt announced the V-Scan, a portable ultrasound scanner. It's about the size of a Blackberry and flips open like a clamshell phone. Okay, this is not a consumer device. It's mostly for doctors on the run in third world countries. So maybe you do have to be Tom Cruise to have a home ultrasound. U2 is going to stream an entire concert on YouTube this weekend. Sunday's show, Live at the Rose Bowl, will be one of YouTube's few live events. I thought that the band would do this for charity since Bono is so committed to paying down third world debt, but it seems like this is just for fun. The concert will stream across five continents and two replays will be available on YouTube.com and YouTube. How about some Halloween themed earbuds to end the show today? Check out the crazy earphones. It looks like wacky things that are coming out of your ears like a banana, a cat's paw, a bolt, and a sushi roll. They cost $22 each and they speak for themselves. Those are your headlines for today, and I will be back tomorrow with more. Thank you for watching. I'm Natalie Del Conte with CNET TV, and you've just been loaded. It's the new Yahoo, brought to you, made by you, for you. Yahoo. It's you.